Good morning Year 10 and welcome to today's maths lesson. Let's start off with a quick starter shall we? In your rough books or on your mini whiteboards, whatever you have to hand, please pause the video for 10 minutes or so and have a go at as many of these questions as you can. Questions 1 to 10 are all numeracy based, 11 to 15 are all algebra based and then there's an extension question from a GCSE paper to have a look at if you have time. Pause the video and have a go at those questions now please. Okay, let's run through the answers. So for the first question, so if you've done a column addition and a column subtraction, that would give you 184 and negative 1. 535 divided by 5 gives you 107. That multiplication would give you 408. Negative 3 plus negative 4 gives you negative 7. To find a sixth of 36, I need to divide 36 by 6, and that would give me 6. 503 divided by 100 gives me 5.03. 3.4 times 10 to the power of negative 2, that's standard form, and there's an ordinary number, that's 0 0.034. Adding together those two fractions would give me 22 over 15. And to find the nth term, we look at the difference between the terms, and that's 4, so we know it's 4n. But then to go from 4n to our first number, which is 2, 4 times 1 would give me 4, I need to subtract 2 to get me 2, so it would be 4n take away 2. Looking at my algebra questions, 3d times 2d gives me 6d squared. If 5x is negative 10, x must be negative 2. Expanding that bracket gives me 2x plus x squared. If x is 2, 5x is 5 times 2, which is 10. And if you expand that bracket, you get x squared plus 3x plus 2. If you had a go at my extension question, two numbers multiply to make zero. One of the statements below is true. The one that's true is the first, the second one, sorry. The second one has to be true, but at least one number must be zero for them to multiply and make zero. Okay, we're going to start off by looking at ordering numbers on a number line. So on your mini whiteboards or in your rough books, Pause the video for one minute and have a go at ordering these six numbers on this number line for me. Okay, let's talk about it. Now we know all the negatives are going to lie on this side of the zero. So all the negative numbers we already know will be on this side of our zero point, our zero point being in the middle. And we also know all our positives are going to be on this side. Now we need to compare those numbers. So if we start with our positives, we look at our units column first. 6.78 has got a 6 in the units, whereas the other two have got a 0. So that's going to be the largest. If we then compare our next term, 0 0.25 has got a 2 in the tenths column. 0 0.6 has got a 6 in the tenths column. So 0 0.6 is going to be slightly bigger, and then 0 0.25 is slightly smaller. If we look at our negatives, we need to compare them in the opposite direction. We say, well, negative 9.01 has got a 9 in the units column, so that's going to be the most negative. Negative 1.4 has got a 1 in the units column, so that's going to be slightly less negative. And negative 0.07 has got a 0 in the units column, so that's going to be the least negative. So in order, from smallest to biggest, we've got negative 9.01, negative 1.4, negative 0.07, then 0.25, then 0.6, then 6.78. Over to you guys in your rough books. Pause the video for a couple of minutes and have a go at these questions for me. Can you write these numbers in order from smallest to largest? And these are the answers I was looking for. Please check your work and see how you did. Okay, now we're going to look at finding the midpoint of two terms. So here I've got 5 and 9, and to find the midpoint between 5 and 9, I could draw them on a number line and then count backwards from 9 and count the same number of places forward from 5, or I can look at a different method, and I'm going to look at the different method now. If I start by adding together 5 and 9, that gives me 14. And then if I divide 14 by 2, that gives me 7. And that's the midpoint. 
So we can find the midpoint of two numbers by adding them together and then dividing by two. Over to you guys, in your dark blue books, can you write the title Finding the Midpoint and then, then pause the video for a minute and have a go at this example for me. Okay, I'm going to go through it. So I'm going to start by adding together those two numbers. 4 plus 10 gives me 14. Then to find the midpoint, I need to do 14 divided by 2. And that's going to give me 7. So both of those sets of numbers have a midpoint of 7. Over to you guys, in your rough books, please pause the video for 10 minutes or so and have a go at these questions. Can you find the midpoint between these sets of numbers? And these are the answers I was looking for. Please check your work and see how you did. Some of them have gone off the screen. There they are. But why have we been doing this? Now we're going to look at a new type of average today. So far we've looked at the mean and the mode. Now we're going to look at the median. And the median is the middle number. Okay? And you start by putting the numbers in order from smallest to largest, which is what we were doing at the beginning of the lesson. You then cover up one number at each end until you get to the middle number. For example, if I had the shoe sizes of six people, six, two, eight, five, eight, and seven, and I wanted to find the median, I start by putting the numbers in order from smallest to largest. So two, five, six, seven, eight, and eight. That's the order from smallest to largest. I then go from one end to the other. So I go one from this side, one from this side, two from this side, two from this side, three from this side, three from this side. So we know that the median is the middle number between these two numbers. How do I find the midpoint between two numbers in the middle, six and seven? Well, we just did it. We add together six and seven. And that's going to give me 13. I then divide that by 2. 13 divided by 2 gives me 6.5 or 6.5. OK, guys, in your dark blue books, can you write me the title median? And underneath, write median, the middle piece of data when all data is in order. Pause the video and complete that now. And then I'll go through two examples and then there'll be two for you to do. OK, here's my first example. I've got 2, 3, 5, 9, 13 and 18. Now these are already in order, which is going to help me out. To find the median, I need to find the middle piece of data. So I count from each end, 1 from each end, 2 and 18, 2 from each end, 3 and 13, and then 3 from each end, 5 and 9. So I know the median is in the middle between these two numbers, 5 and 9. To work out the midpoint, I add together 5 and 9. 5 and 9 gives me 14. I then divide that by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So the median for this set of numbers is going to be 7. I'll do another example. This time I've got 5 numbers and that's going to make my life a bit easier. I start by putting them in order. 4, 6, 7, 12, and then 13. I then want to find the middle piece of data, so I count from each end, 1, 2, and 3. So the middle piece of data is already in the data, it's 7. So the median for these numbers is just 7. I don't need to find the midpoint between two numbers because I've got an odd number of data. So my middle number is already within the data. Over to you guys in your dark blue books, pause the video for two minutes and work out the median for these two examples. OK, I'm going to go through it. So we start with the first one where they're already in order. We count from each end. One from each end, two from each end and three from each end. So we know our median lies between those two numbers in the middle. Let's find the midpoint. I need to do 5 plus 10, which gives me 15. 
Then to find the midpoint, I do 15 divided by 2, which gives me 7.5. So that's the median for the first set of values. For the second one, it's slightly easier because I've only got five numbers. If I put them in order to start with, 4, 6, 6, 11, and 12, I now count from each end, 1, 2, and the middle number is 6. So my median for these values is going to be 6. Over to you guys in your light blue books. Please pause the video for 5 to 10 minutes and find the median for each of these sets of values. Remember you need to start by putting them in order and then find the middle number. If there's an odd number of values, that makes your life a lot easier because the number will already be in the middle. For example, for the first one, they're already in order. I count from each end. 1, 2, and the median's in the middle, so it's 5. Pause the video for 5 to 10 minutes and complete those now, please. And the answers are up on the board. Please check your work and see how you did. Okay, there's one more term we need to take a look at. So in your dark blue books, can you give me the title range? And underneath, write the range is the difference between the highest and lowest value. The highest and the lowest value. Pause the video and complete that now, please. Okay, I'll go through an example and then there'll be one for you to do. Now this one's actually slightly easier. To find the range of this set of values, I need to find the difference between the highest and the lowest value. For this set of values, the highest is 18, the lowest is 3, so to find the difference I just need to do 18, subtract 3, which gives me 15. Over to you guys in your dark blue books, can you find me the range of this set of values please? Okay, let's go through the answer. The highest number is 16, the lowest is 1, so I've got 16 subtract 1, which tells me the range is 15. It's exactly the same as my previous answer. Over to you guys in your light blue books or on a rough piece of paper. Please pause the video for 5 to 10 minutes and find the range of these sets of values for me. And these are the answers. Please check your work and see how you did. And that's the end of today's maths lesson. Please head on over to Google Classroom and submit today's exit ticket so I can check your learning for today. Hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for listening. Goodbye.